NASA's upcoming project, Artemis II, will take humans back to a part of space we haven't been to in decades, the area near the south pole of the moon. Even though the moon is our nearest celestial neighbor, just some 380,000 kilometers from Earth, there's still a lot we just don't know about it. On Saturday, Artemis II began rolling slowly towards its launch pad in preparation for takeoff, expected in February. These baby steps, trundling along the ground at one and a half kilometers per hour, are in stark contrast with the scope of the Artemis program's ambitions. And this is going to be our first step toward a, a sustained lunar presence on the moon. Um, so it was 10 days, four astronauts going further from Earth than any other humans ever traveled. Um, we'll be validating Orion spacecraft's life support navigation crew systems in the really harsh environments of deep space, um, and that's going to pave the way for future landings. They won't land on the moon, but those four astronauts will make history. And as we fly by the, uh, the far side of the moon here, the crew is going to spend a day in lunar observation. So they're going to you know, basically spend uh, the day giving their observations on the far side of the moon, which uh, hasn't been seen, you know, parts of it hasn't been seen by human eyes before. So that'll be a great opportunity. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together. The first now, Artemis in 2022 flew a 25-day lunar orbit mission uncrewed and then returned to Earth, a test for the crewed mission coming up next month. With each planned launch, NASA has bigger plans for Artemis. The third mission, likely in 2028 or after, will bring humans to the lunar surface for the first time in over half a century. Artemis 4 plans to debut humanity's first crewed lunar space station called Gateway. An apt name, it will orbit the moon and is intended to act as a stepping stone, testing technologies and operations in preparation for the first crewed mission to Mars. I'm joined now by Keith Cowing, editor of nasawatch.com. So Keith, going to the dark side of the moon here, why is NASA going back to the moon after more than five decades? Well, as someone who just turned 70, uh, <laughs> I've been expecting this for quite a long time. When I grew up, they said, you know, you're gonna go to the moon by the end of the decade. And we did. Then they said Mars by 1981. And well, uh, here I am, 70, a senior citizen. We haven't done that yet, but it's, it's always a good time to go back to the moon. We have unfinished business there. We have greater capabilities today to study the moon. And this time we're gonna go and we're gonna stay. So this is a big difference. How important is this mission? Well, it's important for uh, in, in many ways. First of all, can we still, you know, send people to the moon? Second of all, um, looks like somebody has decided there's a space race now with China. So China's intent on sending their Taikonauts to the moon. And America has decided to set up the challenge and take it on and they're going to do it. So at least those two countries, plus Europe and Canada and Japan and everybody else who's involved, are seeing this as a challenge pretty much to, again, pick up where we left off and then move on to other parts of the moon and to Mars and beyond. Now, the astronauts will not actually be landing on the moon this time. What exactly are they going to be doing? Well, quite a bit. First of all, this may sound silly, but looking out the window. I mean, there's a lot of this whole issue of when you are going to a place ahead of a crew that's going to land, you want to do recon. And back in the explorers days, they would sail around an island and get the telescopes out and look for things and bays that you can land at and so forth. They're also testing their spacecraft, however, and they're going to be running it through everything from how does the life support system work? How does the toilet work? How does the food work? How does everything else work? And uh, sort of proof testing the spacecraft so that when we do send a crew to the moon, we're confident that it'll do all the things it's supposed to do. Sounds like important stuff. When do you think they will be sending a crew to the moon again? Oh, I'd go to Las Vegas if I knew that number. Uh, it, it's always a bit of a thing in motion, but if they launch on February, you know, in February this year, I, I would expect that you're going to see 2028 probably towards the end of the year as a likely date. But 
things change. You know, we may have a different way of doing it where uh, the new administrator is having a relook at how we land on the moon and uh, what we use for landers and rovers and things like that. So those those dates may change. But I think if you were going to take some time off to watch a moon launch, late 2028 might be a good time to pick or early 29. Let's talk about this Artemis too, though. For now, the rocket's being moved into position. The launch isn't until next month, as you said. Can you walk us through what happens now, step by step? Well, it's funny you say walk us through because I actually, back in the day when uh, I, I worked at NASA, I actually walked with the crawler when it had a shuttle on it. And uh, anybody in even poor health can walk faster than that thing. So it's, a, it's an okay. immense piece of hardware on top of a giant tractor. So just that is getting it to the pad. Then they're going to go through now all the pad checks to make sure that everywhere that you plug it in, uh, that the, the, the connectors work, which can sometimes cause launch delays. So you want to make sure that that works. At some point, they'll fuel up the rocket to test off the, the inner part. The other two rockets on the other side are solid rockets. They already have the fuel in them. Then they'll have the crew go in there and practice all the things that go with the, you know, the initial preparations for launch, and, you know, they'll do external uh, inspections. If it rains a lot, they may have to go outside and make sure there's no little dings or dongs in the spacecraft. But it's going to be testing up until the point that they launch. And if it's going to be launching in a month or so, it's going to be nonstop testing from now until then. Keith Cowling, editor of NASAWatch.com. Great talking to you as always, Keith. My pleasure.